Hey guys, Paloma here and welcome to the Bates House. Today I'm taking you guys into my craft room to share with you 10 of my favorite Dollar Tree craft room organization products, plus one bonus item that Dollar Tree actually used to sell but doesn't any longer. They may in the future because you can actually find this item currently elsewhere for I believe under a dollar. Starting off with the first item, it is going to be the Dollar Tree shoe box. Now, Dollar Tree has recently released these clear lid shoe boxes in several different colors. And I love the fact that they have this very clear light gray because it coordinates in my space very well. The lid is clear as well, which is fantastic for someone like me because I have to look around and see my stash so that I can piece it together creatively in my mind. Now these lids are known for popping up, so Dollar Tree also carries two-pack child safety latches that you can adhere to your containers. You can of course use them for so many different things in your craft space, from standard overflow, or you can even get creative and make them into organizers for different things like your clear stamps, your sticker collections, whatever the case may be. I like these for things that I have a lot of, or maybe some larger sheets of stickers because they are a great long size. They are very deep and I love the fact that you can see through them. It makes it perfect for stacking them in small or larger spaces because you can see straight into them. Next is the lock top sandwich containers. These have been my absolute most favorite containers for several years now. I have several in the dark and light gray. They are perfect for your craft supply storage whenever you want to take your larger categories and break them down into subcategories. For example, I have one bin for my kids and I use these sandwich containers to break up the different categories inside that bin because you can fit up to four containers into one large shoebox. So imagine if you had a stamp collection and you wanted to break it up by seasonal but have them all in one place, here you go, perfect solution for you. Next we're going to take a look at the cupcake carrier with handle. These containers are fantastic. These containers have a clear lid with a handle, a white base. Now they do have inset circles for where you would put your cupcakes, but that doesn't even matter. It does have a lock latch on each side of the container so that if in the case you drop your container, everything stays inside and nothing falls out all over the place. The handle does lay flat, so you can stack these nicely. I find them perfect for storing overflow supplies that you don't use often and perfect for the supplies that you use every day. The fact that they have that handle is great so you can pull them from your shelf and carry them to your worktop or your desktop or even on the floor if you're like me. I love these containers and the fact that they are clear on top is a definite plus. If a container is not clear, I will not use it. I'll put things in there and I'll forget all about them. So when I have a closed container, it has to be something that I hardly ever reach for. The lids on these containers are very high, so that gives you the opportunity to break down one category into subcategories. So if you know you have tiny pieces of, ephem of ephemera that can get lost, put a container in there to separate those small bits from the larger bits. Next are the medium rectangle storage boxes. These actually have two handles, one on each side of the container, and they are clear top and on the sides. Again, that is essential to my craft space so that I could look around and just look into the boxes to see what I have. I use these to store my ephemera. So anything that is not beads or charms or anything like that goes into these containers, such as chipboard, wood bits, wood pieces, metal tags, paper tags, and so on. They are the perfect size because it allows you to have a little bit or a lot in each container. I also use them for vinyl scraps. Next, let's talk Dollar Tree's faux acrylic trays. 
They had thieves in a medium and a large, and back in the day before Dollar Tree had almost everything that it has now, I used to use butter dishes, which is what I consider the smallest of the trio. You can also use that if you don't have too large of a collection, but I find these perfect to store your unraveling washi rolls. They are amazing in keeping things contained, and since you are going to be storing your unraveling washi, you want to keep your clear containers that washi typically comes in because that is going to allow you to create a type of dispenser for your unraveling washi roll. All I do is take the actual container that the washi comes in, I cut off one of the little tiny flaps that are on the top, and I allow a little gap to kind of form there for the tape to dispense. I put them all into the tray and it makes a nice flat surface so you could actually take your trays and stack them vertically if you have a small narrow space you can maximize that vertical space most next we're going to be taking a look at the little cell phone pop sockets i actually wanted to find a dollar tree solution to a handle that we could use on our organizers that dollar tree put out recently for your pens and paint brushes and I thought these were perfect because they had a nice adhesive backing that is a gel form, which makes for a great wall hook, doorknob, handle, and all of that good stuff. So I took the Crafter Square organizer and put it together and put one of the little pop sockets on the center as a handle. This is perfect, so whenever you want to pick up your supplies and move it around, you can do that easily without having to pick it up by the leg and risking something being too heavy and falling apart or anything like that. Just remember, before applying the pop socket, clean the surface where you're going to be putting it. Whether that is on a wall, on a drawer front, on one of these organizers, clean the area so that you have a nice clean surface to apply that adhesive to because if not it will just pick up the dirtiness and it will fall right off. I have personally used these in my office as the handle for my organizers, also hooks by the door, and some hooks above my desk for those random items that are kind of hard to store because they fall over like a bulky stapler or the tape rolls that I'm using currently. They are just really good options as hooks so you don't damage your walls. Speaking of the Crafter Square organizer, that is actually the next item on the list. These are perfect for storing your repurposed sassy and chic blending brushes also from the Dollar Tree which be in a whole other video which have been in other videos with hauls and experiments and all that. It is perfect to hold all of those for your ink collection blending brushes it's also great for storing your different types of markers because if you're like me you have permanent markers you have double ended markers you have colorful pens and matte pencils and all these other random miscellaneous things that we use on a whim and this is the perfect affordable item to keep those sorted. I even use one to keep all of my reach for tools such as blades and scissors sorted neatly. Plus at a dollar a piece you can definitely afford to keep it all organized. Next we're going to take a look at the Dollar Tree dish or plate rack. These are perfect, of course, for storing vinyl and all of those good things, but I have used these for years to organize my paper, such as my journals, my planners, my planner papers, the planner covers that I have done. I love these for organizing papers, books, and things like that. They are compact enough to fit on a small shelf, but they have enough spaces for you to be able to sort several things onto them you can stand them up on their sides and make sure that you are able to organize your planners vertically if you like because it will hold them nice and tight you could do the same thing with your books i love these for paper journal book organization the next item is going to be two items in one because it's going to be the cardboard box options recently they came out with these very narrow boxes that are fairly slim and they've always had the organization file boxes i think these have the perfect bones for repurposing 
So for the narrow boxes, I actually just chopped them in half and cut a little lip and they are the perfect storage for all of my vinyl rolls. Whether it is permanent, regular, removable, all of that, it all goes in there. Not any heat transfer stuff, just vinyl rolls, but it holds a ton and it was the perfect solution because I only had that small space since my whole room is covered in bookshelves. I felt like I needed to consolidate it down. Also, the file box, I cut that down and it made the perfect sticker storage by puzzle piecing a few pieces together. And I am in love with this solution. I will be showing you guys next how to do this really quick. I came up with this trying to find a solution for myself because for me, it doesn't work to go through each book individually to see what's in there that I wanna use. I like to break things down by category so it only made sense to take everything out of the books and it has been magical ever since but this can definitely work for those book lovers as well jumping into this tutorial i'm going to make it as clear as possible but we're going to be moving fast so basically you're going to take your get organized file box and you're going to measure the center of the front and the back you're going to cut one side at a time making sure not to cut all the way through whenever you're cutting one side at a time because if you cut all the way through you're gonna have an uneven box so I cut the front side now I'm working on the back side we're gonna cut the lid off because the lid is gonna work as our base of this box once you have your box cut in half then you can go ahead and focus on your lid take your lid and also cut it in half then you're going to cut off the side pieces. Once you cut off your side pieces, you're going to adhere your lid together. So you're going to take that little flap and adhere it with some double sided tape and some glue for extra durability. Once you have it glued, you can apply some clips to make sure that it stays in place and dries nice and tight. Then we're going to adhere the bottom of our box in place. You can use double-sided tape or glue, depending on how much time you have. Once you have that adhered, we're going to adhere the base to our box. That flap is gonna give us the front lip of our box to keep our books or papers in place. We're going to adhere it to the base of the box with double-sided tape and glue, again, for extra durability. Flipping the box on its side, we're going to clean up the lines at the top of the box to make sure they're straight. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and take the scrap pieces that we cut off and cut a straight line on, the, on both sides. This is just going to be the front piece of our box to ensure that our papers don't fold over or the books don't fall out. We're just going to measure it to size to fit inside the box. So whatever is excess is just going to be folded over and that is what we're going to use to adhere that piece to the inside of the box. I'm using some masking tape to hold them both in place so that the adhesive that I'm going to apply can dry and these pieces won't fall off before they're dry. I'm going to take some double sided tape and the beacon poster board adhesive and make sure I adhere all of these pieces in place, including that bottom lip. This poster board adhesive is amazing. I have done a review and a test on it. It holds so well. We're gonna repeat that to the other half of the box and now we have two boxes. I'm just cleaning up the bottom of the box to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Once you've done that, you can take your Dollar Tree vinyl roll, you can take your shelf liner, some Mod Podge and napkins, spray paint, whatever you want, and decorate your box to coordinate your space. I'm just using some scrap shelf liner that I got from King Dollar for the sake of this video because it matches the ones that I already made. We're just going to take that and cover our box. To be honest, I would probably just spray paint it and call it a day, but you can do what you like. Then we're going to repeat that to the next box. It's super simple and self-explanatory. We're cutting a box in half and we're covering it. Mm -hmm. 
Once you have both of your boxes totally covered, then you can put your books in there or your sticker sheets in there and you have awesome planner sticker organizers. I actually love this system. I feel like it has worked perfectly, flawlessly for me and it holds a lot. Each one of these can hold up to 16 books of planner stickers. That's amazing. And it was only $1, so 50 cents a box. You can keep them in the books or you can make them loose sheets like me and make your own dividers to, to divide your categories. And that gives us the perfect segue into number 10, Cooking Concepts Chopping Mats. Now, if you are new to the channel, welcome. I actually introduced these to the Dollar Tree scene years ago on the channel with my planner DIYs, whole other story, but I love these for organization. They make the perfect dividers because they are transparent. Well, not transparent, more like translucent. You can see through them, but they are frosted enough to actually be a divider. You can write on them. You can clean off your writing with alcohol. They are easy to cut, so simple to use, and you can use them however you like as dividers. I use them for my sticker organization. I use them as dividers in my clear stamp organization. Again, easy to work with, easy to use. They are huge sheets and you get two in a pack for a dollar. So many things you can do with these mats. Love these mats. Alrighty guys, so as promised, the bonus item. So Dollar Tree used to sell these back in the day until I came up with this system and I needed a lot more. And whenever I needed them, they stopped carrying them. And then everybody went out to go get them and lo and behold, they didn't have them anymore. So I had to go to Walmart and Walmart has the 97 cent curtain rods that are perfect for your washi storage and organization guys all i did was cut these down to size to fit my bookshelf and they have been perfect for storing my tons and tons and tons of washi mind you i used to have an even bigger collection until i purged so you can only imagine but for a few bucks you have a great system to hold your mass collection of washi Okay guys, so that was pretty much it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed seeing what 10 items I incorporate into my office from the Dollar Tree in my craft space that I absolutely love. I do hope that you were able to find some helpful information. I do hope that you are inspired to go out and just find things on a budget, no matter what your budget is, and create a space that you absolutely love and that you can function and flow freely in because to me, it is so important to have a good flow in our space on a budget. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know if you'd like to see some other videos in this style, maybe incorporating smaller supplies that I use from Dollar Tree and how I have repurposed them into my space or what I think about them. If you do, just leave that below for me. Also, you can follow me on my social medias, on my Instagram and my Facebook group at The Bates House, hashtag Bates House, pretty much anything, and we will be there. It's where I show you guys all of the things that I'm doing real time. I get your information or your feedback on polls and what you wanna see, and I kinda just show you where I'm at, what I'm doing, and all of that. So feel free to follow me over there. Again, Instagram, Facebook, at The Bates House. And for now, guys, that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!